Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm coming to you with very bad news about Russia having invaded Ukraine after they've teased the entire world over the past few weeks about this potential invasion into this democratic country, which is something that's finally become an unfortunate reality over the past few hours, as Putin basically ordered his military troops to engage in an operation in eastern Ukraine, which I'm sure is not going to be restricted to some of the more Russian pro areas of Ukraine and might signal a bigger attack on the entire country and a potential takeover over big cities like Kharkiv and the Kiev capital. As you guys can see, Putin declared this military operation announcement through a pre-recorded telecast that he had actually recorded allegedly around two days ago on February 21st. And so he basically broadcasted this while the United States was actually giving its speech in the UN emergency meeting over the past few hours, which just goes to show that this entire invasion in Ukraine was planned well ahead of time. And unlike what many US officials have been saying, Russia has a very strong plan on exactly how they're going to break down some of Ukraine's own military forces. And I definitely think to analyze the real effects this is going to have on the stock market, we need to understand exactly why Putin is doing this invasion in the first place and what are going to be the macroeconomic effects of this invasion over the next few months. We've obviously seen oil prices rise very significantly over the past few trading days in anticipation of this invasion, but some of the more deeper effects of this entire situation definitely extend much further from simply oil and commodity prices. You see, the reason that Putin is invading Ukraine in the first place is because of the fact that Ukraine is a democratized country and that it was potentially going to become a part of NATO very soon. And obviously, since there are a lot of Russian folks in Ukraine and a lot of similarities between both Russia and Ukraine, Russian President Putin does not want Ukraine to become a separate sovereign nation. And he actually said yesterday that he does not expect Ukraine to be a self-sustaining country. And so essentially what he's seeing is a lot of value in Ukraine's land, their people, and obviously their geolocation as a potential entry into Western Europe. And that is exactly why so many commodity prices, especially like wheat and oil have been going up because this part of Europe is a very big exporter to the United States of these very critical goods. And so apart from simply oil prices rising very aggressively, we could see inflation in the United States in the form of the CPI report actually come in a little harder than expected if we start seeing a lot of hoarding and higher inventories from other manufacturers in the United States in anticipation of higher costs from Europe. And obviously higher inflation is something the stock market does not want to see because that could signal to the Federal Reserve that they might act even more aggressively, especially since the underlying economy in this country is doing so well. And as you guys can see through the S&P 500 e-mini futures, the market has definitely tanked very significantly overnight over the past few hours after the market already had a pretty rough day on its Wednesday close. Now I'm recording this very early on Thursday morning, so there could definitely be some very big changes in how the market actually opens when the market opens on Thursday and going into Friday. But generally speaking right now, we're coming down to test this $416 support level, which is something I expect to act as a very strong support. Meaning that right now, investors are potentially already pricing in this invasion happening. And unless Russia is significantly escalating the situation by causing more casualties and showing much more resilience from some of the sanctions that the US has imposed on that country, we could see the market still potentially bounce a little bit going into the next few days. But what I definitely don't expect to happen anytime soon is us reclaiming this $4,300 level on the S&P 500 because that has always acted as a very strong area of support over the past month or so. And that was definitely the lowest low we made in the entire year of 2022 so far. So now that we've broken through that so aggressively, we are potentially going to come back pull back and retest that area before potentially continuing even lower. And as you guys can see, because of the insane volume that we've seen on this breakout to the downside, there is definitely much more selling that institutions are willing to put into this market over the next few weeks, especially if we see inflation go higher and we see more and more Ukraine Russia related supply chain problems. But as can be seen through this chart, every time we have a war in the market, investors already tend to price that in well ahead of time, which means that as a long term investor or somebody who's trying to buy your favorite companies at good prices, these are often very good times to invest in your company. And I know this sounds very weird, but it looks like wars are typically sell the hype by the news kind of event. 
Now, obviously, this time could be very different because we have much more different macroeconomic situations at play. But generally speaking, as a long term investor, you don't want to get too caught up in some of these shorter term headwinds that are not going to have a very direct impact on the American economy. As we all know, the stock market, especially the S&P 500, is essentially a long term projection of where the economy is headed. Now, obviously, regardless of what happens in the stock market, this situation in Ukraine is a very, very serious situation. And I'm definitely sending my prayers and thoughts to everybody that might be involved in this situation, especially the innocent civilians that are residing in Ukraine, which is a country of over 44 million people. And for what I'm reading on reports, we're right now seeing invasions not only from air and land, but we're also seeing invasions from some of the coastal cities of Ukraine near Odessa, Mariupol and Donetsk. And obviously, Russia controls the Sevastopol Crimea region that is in the very south area of Ukraine, which means that unfortunately, Russia has a very strong control over the main borders of Ukraine on both land and water. And obviously, since Belarus is a very strong Russian ally, we could be seeing an invasion from these areas right here into the capital of Kiev, especially through this massive river that tends to flow throughout the entire country. As you guys can see, right after the announcement came out from Putin, we are starting to see some of these rockets that were fired into some of the rural areas of Kharkiv. And as a result, we also saw some very big explosions that occurred around the area. Now, obviously, we don't know how much military and civilian casualties that did cause, but it looks like Russia is trying to break down some of the military checkpoints and some of the big facilities. And it definitely looks like Russia's plan is to cut off some of these big cities from some of their very critical supplies like water, power, internet, and energy before they actually invade these cities and enforce some sort of laws. But as you guys can see, as of filming this video very early on Thursday morning, we're getting this live cam out of the capital of Kiev, which tends to look very calm right now. Although I am hearing reports that there are military operations being executed at the airport of Kiev to basically take down some of the big communication lines. But it definitely looks like the Ukrainian folks right now are essentially going to work and ignoring some of the big stay at home orders that we've seen come out from the president over the past couple of minutes. Now, if we move back to the stock market, we don't really know exactly how the market's going to react because the situation is obviously very volatile. But on Thursday, we do have some very major companies that are reporting earnings, which could potentially give us an idea as to just how much momentum the stock market is actually pricing in right now. As you guys can see, we have Alibaba, Nikola, Wayfair, Open Door, Beyond Meat, Etsy and Coinbase all reporting on the same day, which means that we're going to get a very good idea as to how the EV industry, the e-commerce industry, and also the crypto industries have been doing over the past quarter. And if any one of these companies ends up reporting a very good earnings report and the stock still ends up selling off, it could mean that the entire market is potentially signaling another move to the downside. Because obviously over the past year, small caps and mid caps have been getting destroyed. And so if these companies are reporting good earnings, even after this big valuation correction, it would be a very bearish signal if these stocks still continue to sell off. And if we're going to be intraday trading tomorrow, it's very important to keep in mind that NATO could come out with an announcement at any point in time over the next 24 hours. And we're also expected to hear Biden essentially give an emergency speech on Thursday, which could again trigger some momentum and volatility in the stock market. So definitely keep that in check if you are day trading intraday. And as you guys can see, the sell off in the entire market is unfortunately being also reflected in crypto prices as Bitcoin essentially got this massive flash crash over the past hour or so, which is definitely very in line with just how much crypto has been reflecting technology stocks over the past couple of months, even though you would typically expect Bitcoin to be an inflation hedge. And although in the short term, the Bitcoin chart definitely looks very bearish, and I would not be surprised to see 29 or 30,000 very near in the future. I definitely expect long term Bitcoin to be a very good asset to own if you want to diversify outside of cash, real estate and regular stocks. But anyways, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. I hope you enjoyed this very quick update and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.